Welcome to Yanko Africa. My name is Ama. I want to thank you guys for tuning in on today. I pray that everyone is doing well. It has been a while. If you're not aware, I did break my ankle, so that has impacted my ability to do some of the things that I wanted to do and share at this time. Um, but please know that you guys are in my thoughts and in my prayers. And um, today's share is actually along the lines of some of the things that I have discussed in the past on this channel and on another channel that I have. Please know that on this channel, we share things that relate to the African diaspora and your transition to the continent. I may even share some things from uh, back in the U.S. Um, that relate to us. But my purpose is just to share knowledge and information and whatever um, information that I share, if it can help us and the things that you guys, you know, comment and share as well. Um, if it can help me and help others, you know, that's all that really matters. And that's my point here. So I don't want you to think that this channel is set up for one particular topic or one particular genre. Um, it all has to do with our, uh, I guess, our transition. Uh, and for those who are going back and forth, but anything that has to do with us in our people, I hope to share if I feel that it will benefit us, okay? And so one of the things, um, if you noticed that the last uh, share that I uploaded dealt with the Ghana's plan to uh, up, uh, start vaccinating its citizens, and it has already started. When I say it, the country has already started the process of vaccinating uh, citizens, right? And I thank each of you for commenting and viewing that share. But I want to respond today to those who um, say that some of the concerns that people have about vaccines, especially unproven vaccines, um, that they are conspiracy theorists and it's unproven. And these are the type of people who come up with crazy ideas about, you know, conspiracies against black people, against Africans, against, you know, the general population. And today I want to discuss some of the things that were once called conspiracies, okay? And please, this is not going to be a rush share. So if you can hang in here, if you really want to see some truth, some things that were once called conspiracies that are proven in our court systems to be real situations, tune in. I'm going to feature um, a video of one of our former presidents apologizing for the CIA involvement in uh targeting and programs that were designed to uh, to attack our people, all right? Uh, without their consent, they were used as test dummies, so to speak. And I'm talking modern times, okay? We know about things that have happened maybe 50 years ago. I'm talking things that have happened three years ago and are still going on today, okay? So if you can see now my screen, I'm sharing with you a court document from the U.S. Supreme Court, all right, to the U.S. Supreme Court from the 11th Circuit case, and it gives the case number, it gives the name by Stan J. Uh, Catterbone, pro se, and it provides us with the date that this was filed, which is October 5th, 2018. All right, now, not to go into the details so much about this case, but what it deals with, it deals with, um, just to give you just a general idea, it deals with uh, those uh, persons who have been involved in mass shootings in America, stating that they believed prior to the incidents and after that they themselves were victims victims of U.S. controlled, orchestrated MK Ultra, which is a mind control program set up by the government of the United States of America, and. It you know these things operate in other countries, so they say. But we know for sure in our country that it has um, been implemented in the past and in uh, currently going on. All right. Now, if you have listened to me on uh, this channel and other channels, I've spoken about targeting individuals. I've spoken about you know operatives being among us, especially those of us who are coming to the continent and encouraging others how to come and assisting them. And those of us who are still living in the U.S., um, it's nothing new that we have been victims of targeting. But many of the complaints that people make, you know, are received much like those complaints by those and concerns by those who have concerns about the vaccine and the safety of it. Let's just face it, these vaccines have not been proven and have not been tested as they should be. And so 
when we are so quick to call things a conspiracy, we really need to consider the past because there are a lot of things that have been considered to be conspiracies that have now been proven to be true facts, okay? And not conspiracies at all. So this is one such case where um, those who have committed um, uh, mass murder, that's basically what it is, um, in the past, have stated that they believe that they were victims of U.S. sponsored mind control. All right. And not only them, we're going to see people who are diplomats for the U.S. embassies around the world. OK, so hold on. I'm not going to rush. So in this document, this is a United States court document. There is a series of questions that are being asked of CIA officials. OK, question number one here says, did the United States of America Air in not granting a jurisprudential exception, and then it gives the number here, in order to avoid having to consider the following, which would necessarily obligate another set of congressional hearings akin to the church hearings in 1973, whereby the CIA had to omit the existence of MK Ultra which it declared abandoned. Okay, so now this is referring to some things that happened in 1973, but this case is taken up in 2018 concerning people who in this time, in this decade, in this century, um, or previous decade, because we just entered into the two 2020s, believe that they are victims of mind control. And this program is still going on today along with other uh, targeting programs sponsored by our government. All right. And the agent answered, answered to question number one, with regards to Esteban Santiago, mass shooter at the Fort Lauderdale airport, for which the amicus brief was filed and other mass shooters that have made similar claims of being victims of U.S. sponsored mind control with a history of military training, are their constitutional rights to due process being compromised and should the following not be granted? Then he goes on to say, Victims of U.S. sponsored mind control technologies operated by operatives. Those are the people that they put in your communities, in your neighborhoods, in your apartment buildings, in your uh, wherever you are. They are the ones on the ground operating these so-called technology against you to control your mind, doing skull to brain uh, signals and frequencies. These are the things that they use to carry out their work here, so-called work. Devil men is another name for it. All right. So operatives, agencies, and or in direct partnership with United States military, military is involved. Your soldier may be involved. Your husband, your son, your daughter, your neighbor, your cousin, whoever. Okay. Your brother, your dad, your mom. Law enforcement, your local police, and or intelligence agencies or international collaboratives. So those of us who are on the African continent, you've been sold out, okay? You got coons in the US, excuse me, and you have them, if that's, you know, offends you, I'm not trying to offend anybody, I'm just telling you, but you got some on the continent as well, okay? International collaborative are insured their constitutional rights, okay? This is what he's saying are afforded, this is what they should have got, they should have been afforded the proper administration of law in accordance with their actions and in such actions are deemed, and if such actions are deemed proxy to their handlers, they're admitting they have handlers. Now you look that up if you don't know what a handler is, or controllers, and they are granted the proper immunitive defenses during criminal prosecutions by United States attorneys, state attorneys, and our local magistrates, meaning there should be special consideration for them if they were indeed victims of the MK Ultra program that they claimed was abandoned, but obviously is still going on, okay? Number three, that any and all such diagnoses of mental illnesses are first deemed to be symptomatic of U.S. sponsored mind control first, meaning that they should have done a, an exam on these people to see that if they are mentally ill, it is a result of the mind control. So they're admitting that this can call mental, cause mental illnesses or mental breakdown. Okay, that's their goal. And treatments are to ensure that victims are prepared for a safe life and assure they are not a threat to society. 
Number four, that local law enforcement agencies and local police are to be advised of such circumstances and are prohibited from targeting and are surveilling the victims in any way. So the police are supposed to be informed of this, right? And if this person has been broken down, basically, they're not supposed to be targeting. That means they are involved in targeting, okay? Lord have mercy. Number five, that hearing voices and such related symptoms are not to be used for mental health warrants or and or hospitalizations alone without a thorough analysis of their class of suffering symptoms of U.S. sponsored mind control. Did you hear that? So they are admitting that their U.S. sponsored mind control causes these symptoms. So the people they're calling crazy are not crazy. They're hearing what they're hearing because they send skull to brain technology. They use that to speak through frequencies and waves to your brain. So what you're hearing, even though the person's not speaking, they have learned to communicate with your brain through wave frequencies. If you do not know this, look it up. Okay. Number six. Now, here's the thing. Our own president, Bill Clinton, in the 1990s, then President William Jefferson Clinton made public statements and apologies. He made more than one public statements and apologies for military intelligence programs using American citizens as non-consensual experimentees. Such public disclosures at some point in time should be addressed by the current administration of victims of U.S. sponsored mind control. That's just the MK Ultra program. That doesn't include the targeting that they do with electromagnetic radiation, which some of us experience. I'll show you that. And also other types of targeting, stalking, all of these other things that they do. They usually go after people for experimental health programs and all sorts of so-called research. But they go after you if you are a person of integrity, a person of truth, you're sharing that truth, whatever it is. You may not even know what it is, but if they feel that it is a threat to them, and I tell you what, people who are leaving the United States, African-Americans, progressive, when I say progressive, people who are productive, which most of us are, all right, who are leaving and who are encouraging others and showing others how to, look, we have choices outside of these uh, United States. That is a threat to their system. And if you don't think so, you better rethink it. Okay. All right. But you're free to do and believe whatever you want. Question number two. Is pro se petitioner Stan S. Catterborn, listen to this, his father Samuel P. Catterborn Jr. and his brother Samuel A. Catterborn, victims of U.S. sponsored mind control technologies who suffered incidents and violations of civil constitutional rights of non-consensual experimentation paramount to torture, meaning did y'all torture them without their permission? Answer to the question, yes, period. Did y'all uh, use mind control on them without their permission? Answer, yes, period. Did they carry out these acts pretty much because y'all programmed them? Yes, period. Conspiracy, huh? Conspiracy theory. There go your conspiracy theory. This is CIA answering, okay? Question number three, did pro se petitioner Stan J. Catterbond fall victim to a criminal civil conspiracy while engaging in whistleblowing activities in the ISC CIA international arms dealer scandal in 1987, which continues to today? He's talking to him in 2018 and he says, which continues to today and now has manifested into a cover-up and obstruction of justice case of mass proportion. Let me read that again. Which continues today that now has manifested into a cover-up and obstruction of justice case of mass proportion. His answer to the question number three, yes, period. OK, so when we are so quick to call things conspiracy, we really need to think again. All right. Now, I'm going to show you something else here. Hopefully I can get it up. 
All right, so one second. All right, EMF, that's another form of targeting, okay? When I mention in other shares on this channel and on another channel about electromagnetic uh, frequency targeting, here are some of the symptoms. There are no specific symptoms associated with claims of EHS and our reported symptoms range widely between individuals. They include headache, fatigue, stress, sleep disturbance, disturbances, skin prickling, burning sensations, rashes, pain, ache in muscles, and many other health programs problems. So in other words, there's nothing in particular, one particular symptom here but these are some of them that are listed by people who are victims. So are these just random people, criminals who go up and shoot people up and then want to claim that they, you know, are victims of targeting and victims of these things? Let's see. Okay, I'm not sure how aware you all are about, you know, how you keep up with current events, international current events, but let's see some of the things that are going on, not only with the average person, but diplomats, U.S. diplomats. It's called here on BBC Report. All right, this is December 2020. The Havana Syndrome, likely caused by directed microwaves, U.S. report. Now, of course, the U.S. is not going to point the finger at themselves, right? But it says here, mystery illness suffered by U.S. diplomats in Cuba was most likely caused by directed microwave radiation. A U.S. government report has found the report by the National Academic Ac Academies of Sciences, excuse me, the report by the National Academies of Sciences does not attribute blame for the directed energy waves, meaning we ain't gonna blame anyone in particular, but, but, and it literally starts with but, the next sentence, but it said research into the effects of pulse radio frequency energy was carried out by the Soviet Union more than 50 years ago, okay? The illnesses first affected people at the U.S. Embassy in Havana in 2016 through uh, 17, 2017. Staff and some of their relatives complained of symptoms ranging from dizziness. So if their relatives are complaining about it, their relatives don't work at the embassy. So not only are they attacking them at the embassy, they're attacking them at their home. Okay. Staff and some of their relatives complained of symptoms ranging from dizziness, loss of balance, hearing loss, anxiety, and something they described as cognitive fog. It became known as Havana syndrome. And you can read about these. You can read about what is a covert sonic weapon. Um, so many things that are going on that are being carried out by, unfortunately, guys, your military, family members, friends, neighbors, government officials, CIA all in the mouth of it, boys, okay? And so when you are quick to call people's concerns and suspicions, you know, conspiracy, you really need to do your homework and look up, you know, are these things conspiracy? Have any of these conspiracies been proven to be true? So I'm gonna just show you this. I don't, I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to be shown here, but if not, you can go back and look at it. It's a video of, um, the president actually speaking on this issue, right? And apologizing for the U.S. involvement in these things, okay? So it's, a, it's um, let me see how many minutes, 25 minutes, but I'm not going to play all of it, but I'm just going to play a little bit of it, and then I'm going to skip to him speaking. House on C-SPAN. President Clinton on human radiation experiments performed during the Cold War. Two years ago, the President directed an advisory committee to look into more than 4,000 Cold War experiments. At this 25-minute briefing on the release of the report, you'll also hear from Energy Secretary Hazel O'Leary and Ruth Faden, head of the advisory panel. Good morning. There are many important guests in the room this morning, but I think it's important to point out that with us are many family members of citizens who were subject to human radiation experiment and some of the advocates who represent them. Their presence signifies that this administration's commitment to meeting our obligations of power our willingness to share information, to respect the right of people to know the facts, 
the responsibility to limit secrecy and that which is truly essential, and that is to make those who were wronged and harmed whole. When President Clinton came to Washington, he was dedicated to the task of rebuilding the relationship of trust between the citizens and its government. This advisory committee report, the president's response, and the actions he will direct many of us to take today are all evidence of our commitment and his commitment to rebuild the trust with the American people. All right, so you hear here Hazel O'Leary, Energy Secretary at that time, speaking and just kind of setting things up, right? I'm going to go right on into what he has to say about this, okay? So give me just a minute. Classified thousands of pages of documents. We gave committee members the keys to the government's doors, file cabinets, and safes. For the last year and a half, the only thing that stood between them and the truth were all the late nights and hard work they had to put in. This report I received today is a monumental document in more ways than one. But it is a very, very important piece of America's history, and it will shape America's future in ways that will make us a more honorable, more successful and more ethical country. What this committee learned, I would like to review today with a little more detail than Dr. Faden said, because I think it must be engraved on our national memory. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. The goal was to understand the effects of radiation exposure on the human body. While most of the tests were ethical by any standards, some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. They fail both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. In one experience, scientist experiment, scientists injected plutonium into 18 patients without their knowledge. In another, doctors exposed indigent cancer patients to excessive doses of radiation, a treatment from which it is virtually impossible that they could ever benefit. The report also demonstrates that these and other experiments were carried out on precisely those citizens who count most on the government for its help, the destitute and the gravely ill. But the dispossessed were not alone. Members of the military, precisely those on whom we and our government count most, they were also test subjects. Informed consent means your doctor tells you the risk of the treatment you are about to undergo. In too many cases, informed consent was withheld. Americans were kept in the dark about the effects of what was being done to them. The deception extended beyond the test subjects themselves to encompass their families and the American people as a whole. For these experiments were kept secret and they were shrouded not for a compelling reason of national security, but for the simple fear of embarrassment. And that was wrong. Those who led the government when these decisions were made are no longer here to take responsibility for what they did. They're not here to apologize to the survivors, the family members of the communities whose lives were darkened by the shadow of the and these choices. So today, on behalf of another generation of American leaders and another generation of American citizens, the United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments, to their families, and to their communities. When the government does wrong, we have a moral responsibility to admit it. The duty we owe to one another to tell the truth and to protect our fellow citizens from excesses like these is one we can never walk away from. Our government failed in that duty, and it offers an apology to 
of the survivors and their families, and to all the American people who must, who must be able to rely upon the United States to keep its word, to tell the truth, and to do the right thing. We know there are moments when words alone are not enough. That's why I'm instructing my cabinet to use and build on these recommendations, to devise promptly a system of relief, including compensation, that meets the standards of justice and conscience. When called for, we will work with Congress to serve the best needs of those who were harmed. Make no mistake, as the committee report says, there are circumstances where compensation is appropriate as a matter of ethics and principle. And this is clearly one of those situations, or was. And please know that this has not ended, as the report says, that these things continue to this day. So before you start saying that people's suggestions and concerns, questions, complaints, it's just based on conspiracy theories, maybe you should look into some of those conspiracy theories and see if they actually panned out to be the truth. Thank you for tuning in. Shalom.